Good morning, everyone. My name is Trayvon Caesar, and I'm here with Mr. Carrie Chavis, uh, my former teacher at Washington Marion High School. And today I'll be interviewing him to kind of get some answers to a few questions that I myself have and probably some of you may have. So let's get things started with the first question. Uh, Mr. Chavis, you've been an educator at Washington Marion for about five years now. What made you want to teach there? I think students like you, um, individuals who have an ability to be brilliant, uh, but some people may not see it because of the school that you attend, and trying to change the idea of what people think urban kids are. That's what really made me want to teach. Trying to find the shining light, you know. I, I feel you, I feel you. Um, there are a lot of people who look at Washington Marion and see a no good school in the midst of all of that. What made you want to teach there? Uh, I think to really prove people wrong. Uh, there are some brilliant, incredible students at Washington Marion, and I thought if I would go there and be a part of that team and try to bring that out and show and use my marketing skills to show uh, that brilliance, that it could change the whole concept and misconception of Washington Marion. I believe you did that in the little short time that you were there. I think I believe you helped improve a few eyes, you know, the way people look at Washington Marion. So. You're always doing something surprising or spontaneous. January of 2017, you announced that you were going to run for city council in District 8. What made you want to run? I saw a perceived apathy in North Lake Charles. The same thing like Washington Mayor, and I saw that people had misconceptions about the area, and I wanted to be the change that I wanted to see. Uh, President Obama always talks about being the change that you want to see. So. I wanted to apply what I tried to do or tried to help do at Washington Marion to North Lake Charles as well. So that's why I ran. That's really nice. That's really nice. I, I feel like a lot of people were behind you on that one. What do you think was the biggest challenge in attempting to campaign to serve your community? Apathy. Definitely apathy. Um, especially with the very divisive nips sometimes in our community between young people and older people because they don't understand each other. Um, that was the hardest thing going house to house, door to door, getting people to communicate about what was wrong with the community, what they saw and how to make a difference. Um, seeing that older people think a certain way, which is good, and young people think a, diff a different way as well, but trying to bring those people together was probably the hardest part, but I think we, we, we made some ways. We made some ways. You came in third place out of five people who ran. Some say it was a great run and you should try it again. So in three years, will there be another announcement? No comment. <laughs> no comment. No comment, <laughs> folks. Um, I, I really, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I want to, the new venture that I'm working on right now, I want to concentrate on that. Um, we'll see in three years what happens. Okay, and speaking on to new ventures, uh, it, there you helped build the Washington Marion Speech and Debate Team. So... What happens to that team now that you are leaving? Nothing happens. And I think that's the misconception that people have had that because I left Washington Marion that the team now is going to dissipate and I left the kids hanging. I told people I left the classroom, but I didn't leave the kids. I'm still going to coach the Washington Marion Speech and Debate team. There's still going to be incredible young people who are going to come through and be educated by Mr. Chavis. And um, I'm still going to help mentor students. So. Leaving the classroom doesn't mean that I left the kids. So, and you know, if you ever need any help, you can always call on me. You yeah, know, former, former debate captain. Yeah, I was there. He <laughs> taught me, so it's always a steady stream of knowledge just getting passed down. Now, eight fifteen seventeen. Yeah. That has been a date you've been promoting. You've you've been advertising. You've been stating that it is coming. So. Are you ready to let the people know what this date means? Are you, are you ready to let the people know? Are you ready for me to let the people know? So 8-15-17 uh, will be my first day back on the air at uh, KZWA Live 104.9. Um, of course, when I was 14 15, I started working in radio under Ms. Blackwell, who was the matron out of the station. And her family has been doing a wonderful job continuing the legacy. So I'm coming back to the station, to the air, do promotions and marketing as well as on air for the afternoon drive. And I'm really excited to be back home. Really, really excited about that. Oh, that's crazy. Now I get to hear Mr. Chavis on the radio now instead of in the classroom. That's, 
That's a little different. To me, DJ Magic, there won't be Mr. Chambers or D- DJ Mr. Chambers. DJ Magic back in action. Right. Yes, sir. Gotcha. So you've heard it here, folks. Mr. Chavis is transforming back into DJ Magic. And we'll be invading the airwaves of 104.9 starting August 15, 2017. So, Mr. Chavis, what made you want to return back to radio? I miss, I, I miss radio. I think that's the shorthand answer that I missed it. Uh, the long-term answer is that I wanted to be a part of the new legacy of KZWA and uh, use what I've learned through teaching through college to c- better serve the community again. That's that's really what I wanted to do. Always looking to serve the community. Such a great way of working things out. You worked in radio before attending college and working at Washington Marion. What did you learn from those years in the radio? Um, service. That is really important that everything that God gives us, all our talents, all our gifts are not for us but they're to be used to serve other people. So even in radio, um, anchoring an afternoon radio show is about the listeners, not about me. So I'm excited about that, to get back to knowing and enjoying the listeners. So final thought. What do you want to leave the listening audience with? Um, 8, 15, 17. Make sure you get ready for the afternoon show. Support 104.9. And I want to probably leave the audience with... I'm proud of you, of the young man that you've grown up to be. I met Trey when um, he was a sophomore in high school, and it's been about four or five years since then. He's now the drum major at Southern University for their band, so get ready for that Bayou Classic and checking him out. But I'm proud of the young man that you've grown up to be, and remember the same way that the things that Ms. Blackwell taught me, I passed down to students like you. When the elevator success takes you to the top, make sure you send it back down for other people as well. So. That's what I leave the audience with. Well, that was a nice message. Thank you. You know, uh, he he's he's not lying. He watched me grow from shy, innocent little child who didn't really speak too much to the man that I'm still becoming now. So I want to thank you for all the lessons that you taught me. And trust me, whenever I get up there, I'll make sure I come back and send it back down. But to all you folks listening, I want to thank y'all for listening. I listening in. I hope all your questions were answered. I know all mine were, so thank you and have a good day.